you're listening to KYST 89.3, The Bowl. The Bowl. The Bowl. And now time for South Tucson Youth Football. Simulcast on AM 1400, The Ground. And on South Tucson Local Access Channel 22. Good evening, if you can still hear. Uh, you are listening to KYST. I'm Brian. This is South Tucson Youth Football. And we are here on a Friday night. It is Friday night youth football somewhere in America. That somewhere is South Tucson, Arizona. As we get started with week three of action, I'm going to go ahead and bring down the logo. Because that is our first of two games tonight. We've got two big games in our double header for you. Our first game, Francois Crapery, currently sitting at one and one, and taking on an undefeated team, Yoga for Fatties, two and zero. Oh. Our second game will feature another two and zero oh team, Ted's Baby Clothes Emporium, as they face the one and one Casa de Gordoso Hourly Motel. Those are our two games for the evening. I'm joined in the commentary booth by Will. How's it going, Will? Will Muschamp. Will Muschamp, yes. Will Muschamp. Yep, that's me. I'm not going to be around for long right now. I might come back later. I'll be around for like the next 10, 15 minutes. That's totally fine. I'm not even going to plug in my good microphone. So, that's uh, that's fine. That That's totally fine. It, this, this, this isn't a bad microphone. You don't sound that bad right now. It's just the internal. It's the internal laptop, Mike. Oh well, you didn't sound too bad. I didn't know that, but um, cool. Well, um, you know, go ahead, enjoy the game, and maybe you can you can walk to any of the other munis that are within walking distance if they have other games going on. I have no idea if they do. I haven't figured out that canon yet. But uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get to Star Watch. So at least you can get a little bit of some of the game. In the meantime, Star Watch brought to you by Wall to Wall Salve. Don't be a salve, not be a salve. If you need an ointment, cream, or paste, better call Salve. Sponsors of the number twenty eight. Dodge Strat is driven by Ennio Sperini in the Diddler Cup. And we're going to start things off with Francois Crapery. One and one, uh, they play in the Foreign Legion Conference. And their star player is going left to right. That is wide receiver Crisandro Williams. Crisandro Williams. In the middle, that is outside linebacker Dudu Pamper. <laughs> Just a stupid one. Dudu Pamper. And on the right, that is running back Glendrell Splendid. Glendrell ah. Splendid. I think there's something about that that that's kind of a real name of someone out there. I don't remember. Anyway, the other side of the football is Yoga for Fatties currently sitting undefeated 2-0. and One-fifth of the way of the regular season <clears throat> done. In the middle right there, that is uh, defensive end. I'm looking for the name. I can't recall it offhand. That is defensive end Rufus Bernard. Uh, on the left, that is their star wide receiver, Precision Route Runner. <laughs> Precision Route Runner, or Root Runner, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, not pictured is defensive back Caramello Anthony. Caramello and pictured, Anthony. And pictured is punter Maynard Maynard. What's the first name? Maynard Maynard? Yeah, he's Maynard Maynard. Maynard T. Maynard. <laughs> there you go. Well, if you got a if you got a prediction in the chat, let us know who you like in this one. I gotta tell you, it's a it's a good night of um, it's a good night of football here. Uh, they're 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 really excited out at that at the Muni for Francois Craper. There's a lot of great signs in the crowd. Um, one that just says "Vive la France." Um, actually, a lot of a lot of Bastille Day signs. I don't think the people of South Tucson know when Bastille Day is, but you know, there's a lot of Bastille Day signs. Um. <clears throat> Uh, one that just says, I smoke in church. I don't understand that one, but okay. Um, but just a lot of, just, you know, a lot of French flags being waved. Uh, it's really just, you know, it's like, like, like we're on the Champs Elysees, only it smells about the same. So let's head down to the Muni. <clears throat> 
You are looking live in Municipal Field number 33 in downtown South Tucson, Arizona for the first half of our doubleheader tonight. It is Yoga for Fatties, the away team in all white with light blue uh, trim on their uh, away jerseys. Taking on Francois Crapery in the white pants and navy blue helmets and jerseys. They're kicking off and Precision Route Runner is going to be one of the impact players. That is Yoga for Fatties, who are the first to receive. And they'll start things off at their own 31-yard line. And these kids, you know, it is only 4.30. These kids just got out of school. You know, they're, they've had a long day. They've had to get up early. They didn't really get a lot of chance to practice beforehand. They're not warmed up. I think we're going to see at least somebody tear something, Will. Uh, maybe it's a big run. Maybe it's an ACL. Who knows? Well, we got to hope for one or the other, I guess, for this to be all interesting. But it looks like a big run to get things started. Oh, the running back completely untouched. Second play from scrimmage. D.D. Wheatley is going to tear free to open things up for Yoga for Fatties. And they score a touchdown on the opening drive. Two plays in. 35 seconds in, it's a 61-yard touchdown. I'm not going to say I called that, but I am going to say everything happened that I said would happen. At least one half of the thing. You said maybe an ACL, but that did not happen. Maybe. But there's still a lot of game left to play. Extra point is up, and it is good. <laughs> and Yoga for Fatties have struck first, and they have... Uh, well, you know, I want to say they silenced this crowd. I think, I think you know, a lot of the Francois Crapery faithful are just filing in. A lot of them aren't even aware of the fact that it's that they're down uh, seven nothing already. I don't know about that. I think they're silent because they're all eating crepes. Oh, I mean, you know, you can't really be upset when you're eating a crepe. They're delicious. They're not upset. They just their, their mouths are full with crepes. Oh, so they can't boo. Yeah, they can't do anything but eat crepes. <laughs> And oh, big over the shoulder diving catch, Crossandro Williams, 27 yards. Look at that laying out. We are seeing some big it. plays. These kids are ready. They are maybe, maybe they are just all hyped up on sugar and goofballs and whatever else. They are ready for Friday night. The under the lights. This is great. Glendrell splendid. One yard, second and nine. <clears throat> And this, that's the first time, really, we get a chance to breathe at this point. In South Tucson, normally Thursday night is for is for the middle schoolers uh, across the country to play football. Not in South Tucson. Everybody plays football on Friday night. Everybody. It just, Absolutely it's a, everybody. It's a logistical nightmare. Parents have to split up time to watch different kids play. Or they just got, or, or this is this is where they find out which which child is the favorite. I mean, it's a cruel it's a cruel way to find out, but you know they they gotta find out sooner or later. I mean, everyone everyone's got a favorite. Every parent's got a favorite. So I mean, it's kind of just it's better that they know or at an early age and can adjust their life at that point. It's, First and goal right now, Francois Crapery from the four. It's the problem because like they really only needed to build like five stadiums. But because they schedule everybody to play on the same night at the same time, you know, now, they like, like to have that option. It, it's like it's ballooned to like 40 stadiums now. I mean, we've got 60 teams. We have 60 different munis that are played that are just for football. I mean, but you see the numbers. We're numbering them. Their numbers are up in the 170s. Glendrell splendid in with the touchdown, and just two minutes in game time later, Francois Crapery are poised to tie this game back up. It's just the aggressive expansion of the South tu South South Tucson Youth Football League and the complete reluctance to play at any other time. They, it, this just causes ballooning a public works project. It's really threatening threatening the finances of South Tucson. Number 
<clears throat> well, nonetheless, we've got uh, a, potentially a shootout, both opening drives resulting in touchdowns only halfway through the opening quarter. <clears throat> and, oh, it's a fumble. Francois Crapery have fallen on it. Brooks with the catch, he coughs it up on the tackle. Gotten a little handsy there, number 26. Let's and then see if he falls makes the requisite it. steps. I didn't really see that, so whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not going to challenge it. I guess uh, they decide that the smartest thing to do is they don't know, <laughs> you know, they don't know what a football move is. For a while, they just assumed that the guy had to make the Heisman motion. Oh, in a first play, it's a pick. It's an interception. And Yoga for Fatties get it right back. Howard Robinson. That kid, Keenan Copeland threw it right to him. I, I don't know what he was thinking on that play, but he is getting yelled at by that coach. You can see right there, Keenan Copeland getting an earful. Like the safety just came up and, and, and intercepted that route, that deep route. He just jumped it. Jump the route. Very surprised. Jump, jump the route, jump the route, jump up, jump up, and get down. Um, sure. This, I don't know. It's Friday. I it's mean, been a long week. Have you ever, have you ever realized, like, people think Corey Graves is cool at all? Like, he's, he's like the cool, like, heel commentator. Okay. But never forget that, like, he named himself after the lead singer of Cool on the Indies. Whenever you think about Corey Graves being cool, remember that he named himself after Mr. after um, Maynard James Keenan. It's not a cool guy. But cool. That's not a cool guy. <laughs> it's not at all. I think he probably would want that back. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, you know what? I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You can always take... You can never never be afraid to take a guy down a peg or two. <laughs> no, no. I, I don't think he's cool like super cool i just think he's a, become a good commentator i think he is too I think, I think he's just a very very good at his job <laughs> yes he is but he also i think he also buys into the fact that he thinks he's incredibly cool exactly no, and, and and what gives that away is the fact that his hair is just like what it is you don't wear your hair like that unless you have a high sense a high a high opinion of yourself kurt gains the 10 yard catch wide open that was kind of like the play that ended up in the in the interception but at least there was a francois craper receiver there it's second and inches they're going to mark it just short of the first down marker it's like pete holmes has a bit about it where he talks about you know that like if you think about it you know i've been he was like i've been laughing all week because i realized that when lenny kravitz the coolest man in the world has to sign off for a package he has to write his name as Leonard Kravitz. He does. It's Leonard Kravitz. It's not he a, does. It's a, not it's Leonard. It's a nerd name. It's even got the. He's even got nerd in it. Leonard. If you don't pass, that's that's a Pasco and 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 I co-opted opinion. No, I. Sure. That's 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 a good one. I like it. It's a good one. I, he's one of my favorite stand-ups. He's a he's a he's a Boston guy too. Oh, Pete Holmes. Yes, he's. Okay. he's I don't even mean Boston. He's probably like like he's some mass. He's from Massachusetts. That's, that's close enough. Hey, I've got to go. I've had to go my entire life. You know, people from New Jersey get like assume they're from New York City. It's easier to say that to people like everywhere else. So. You know what, all of Massachusetts, you close to Boston? Yeah, close enough, okay. Well, the Jersey's weird because, like, it's close to, it's... It's with, either with Philly or New York. The only city that anybody could possibly be close to that lives in that lives in Massachusetts, that's like an actual city that people care about is Boston. Is Boston, right. But, because nobody gives a shit about problems. But, like... If people in New Jersey... Oh, they big like, diving catch. Sorry. Connor Lilly with the touchdown. Francois Crapery take the lead. Heck of a play there. There's distinctions. You either live in North Jersey and you're close to New York. You live in South Jersey and you're close to Philly. This is There's true. There's distinctions. That's a good so point. I, I guess, I guess, I guess really that's not so much a thing, yeah. 
I think if people actually like, took a second to think about it, they wouldn't just on make and be like, oh, people in New Jersey all live close to New York. That's true. Well, That's a bad example. It's a very realistic possibility that, that a lot of people in New Jersey live close to Philly. Now, if you live in the middle of New Jersey, I have no fucking clue where you're from. <laughs> yeah, no one, and no one really thinks and no one really thinks Trenton. The capital, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but no one thinks of it. I haven't thought about it since I didn't right. know what all the capitals were. Exactly. Well, that, that is kind of like central. It's like if you picture Jersey as like, it's like where it kind of juts in on the, on the west side of it. Actually, I drove. I actually had to drive through Trenton. Like I'm sorry, but did you learn yeah, that where, that Trenton makes the world takes? It's because I missed my turn off 95. And but did drove you like all the way, and drove like all the way up through Bucks County? <laughs> but did you learn that Trenton makes and the world takes? I think like, I Trenton saw ma their, Trenton made you place. lost. So you had to take a, a, a scenic route to get to where you needed to go. I Trenton don't know what you're talking about. The world, I just Trenton makes the world had, like some dumb slogan on their bridge. It is. It's a giant. It's a giant slogan on the bridge. Meanwhile, Rima Dunbar just ripped away a huge run for about 60 yards and taking him into the red zone. We are just starting the second quarter and. Yoga for Fatty's already down to the five. Okay, we're gonna revert back to this because now, because now I'm seeing it. I remember it now. What kind of dumbass slogan is this? <laughs> uh, it just means there's a lot of manufacturing in Trenton that gets exported, textiles <laughs> and spices. It just makes Trenton seem like they have a really big inferiority complex. <laughs> yeah, world. All you do is take, take, take. What about take, us? Take, what about Trenton? What? Why don't you give a little? Yeah, why does the world give to Trenton? Yeah, give a little bit. Give take? a little bit of your love to me, Trenton. <laughs> or world, says Trenton. It's literally. It, it, and it reads in order. Trenton makes, and then the next part of the bridge of the world takes. It's just, it's, a, it, it's an affront. I like to think that any person named Trent, it's short for Trenton. <sighs> that actually would be kind of fun. Oh, big hit and a flag on the play. I don't know what the flag's for. Foul. Roughing, the passer. Roughing the passer. So they were fine with that huge hit that probably concussed that young child. But Daryl Green hit the quarterback after the fact, and it's going to be first and goal for Yoga for Fatties. That's a huge, huge break for them. On the subject of trends, is Trent Dill for a Dill? Is he a dad? Precision route runner with the touchdown. Thank God we don't have to continue that discussion. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's got a kid. That yeah, is precision it's... route runner with the touchdown, tying things up with the extra point. He's yeah, gonna... he's a dad. Okay. So I guess he's a dill. So he could be. Well, if you if you if you if you'd L F him, L to F him. I don't I don't know. <laughs> ah, I just thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> I that's fair. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not. I'm just He's a bald man. I don't I, I just don't have I, much I, to say for it. I th I think you got to I think you got to have a I'm not buying, you know, bald guys as being dills other than the rock. Although I know the rock has kids. <laughs> He does, right? Probably from like a... No, maybe not. Right? I don't think he does. I think we would have heard about it. I, I feel like his know. kids would be in the news. I feel like more. they'd be training by now. Yeah, that too. <laughs> like, I mean, are you kidding me? The Rock's kid? You'd absolutely get a job for life. <laughs> Look at the rest of his family. Yeah. I mean, like... <laughs> half of half of the island of Samoa is, is employed by WWE. Or has been by some point. There's the handoff. Oh, Glenn Drell, splendid. But did he lose the football? No, hung on to it. 19, uh, 17 yards. He has a daughter. He has a 16-year-old daughter. And then he has like a from a from a previous marriage as a two-year-old daughter from his current marriage. Oh shit. To, to uh, Lauren, I can't pronounce the last name. I want to say Tashian. Hmm. Uh -huh. 
But she's but she's the daughter of the drummer from Boston, Sib Hasha. Okay. Which is always something Kyle and I like to bring up because Sib was the co-host of a very famous show on on on, on local access television in the New England area. Hosted hosted by a man we all know and love, Scorch. Oh my God. Well, I thought I thought the band Bo- I thought Boston wasn't really a band. I thought Boston was all just one dude, really. I mean, I imagine, he, I imagine he had a full like like concert band, but like I thought Boston was mostly one dude playing all the things on the recordings. Like he would just layer his own music over himself. No, you're thinking of Lenny Kravitz again. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm not. I, I'm I, I'm kind of serious about this. I thought Boston was like mostly one dude. I just know Lenny Kravitz is the dude who plays like all the instruments on his tracks, and then gets a live band. I mean, so does Ben Folds. That doesn't mean I was talking about him too. I know, but we were talking about Lenny Kravitz earlier. Oh, you were talking <laughs> about Lenny Kravitz. I was talking about Leonard Albert Kravitz. Exactly. <laughs> um, let's see, maybe... I th- I thought they were a full-time band in the recording studio, too. Oh, they're just another band out of Boston. Uh, and I wish I knew the rest of those lyrics to that song so I could really annoy you. That song being Rock and Roll Band. It's... It's one of those bands that's like, it's Tom Scholes is the guy's name. There you go. That's the dude. It's centered around him. It's basically Tom Scholes' band. But is it Tom Scholes' band like Yellow is Jeff Lynne's band? I mean, like, I'm interested in. And what what they mean by centered around it? When I think yeah, centered I, around somebody, I kinda, like you know, you can't have like you, if if you can't you can't like if he dies, you can't bring back the band and have it be Boston. That's not that's not necessarily centered around somebody. Okay. I think if you're center if it's centered around somebody, a band that's centered around somebody, it has to be that the guy writes all the lyrics and, right. and writes all the music. And that's a touchdown for Glendrell Splendid. Like he writes, he writes all the pieces of music, and he writes all the lyrics, and he gets other people to play it in the studio with. I think that I think that's Tom Scholz. Yeah, I think he does that for Boston. I'm trying to. to I don't really care to find out. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, then take my word for it, because I feel like I, I had a friend tell me that, because like, like he basically does most of the stuff. Like it's, it's practically him, and then there's other people who just play the stuff because he can't all play everything at once. He's not coming out with the one-man band set up with the bass drum on his back and the cymbals between his knees. You think, you know, he would have given himself a better name than Tom Scholes for his, like, a stage name and then named it after the stage name if that was the case? Like, it just seems like a weird move to make to call the man Boston and be the only guy in it. I don't <laughs> know. Does. I don't know. It's... Big play from the first playoff of scrimmage. Martin Wayne, 37-yard diving catch. Huge plays been, like, this entire game on both sides. It's 21-14 it for the, uh, yeah. I know what it is that threw me off. It's that it's not like Tom Scholes in the blanks. That's the big giveaway, I think, to, like, a band that, like, that that's centered around one guy. Is when one guy is, the is like, the focal point of the band, and then it's his backup. Tom Scholes and the, and the Doctors? Tom... <laughs> It's Tom Schultz and the Tigers. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, it's also a different era. Like, you're talking, you're trying to name them like a doo-wop group from the 50s and 60s. That's not true. Well, I mean, you kind I, of are, though. Well, I, the reason I thought of it was because of Jonathan Richmond and the New Lovers. I have no idea what that is. Oh, that's, that's a, the reason I thought of that was because, um, <laughs> he's the guy that wrote Roadrunner. Which okay. Is like, which is like the Boston like rock anthem, or the modern lovers. Why say the new lovers? I, you know, you could have stuck with it, and I wouldn't have known. I know. That's why. But I, I felt I needed to correct myself. Like, I mean, all right. Uh, if you can be also known as like the as like the central guy in the blank, like that's not just a duet thing. I, that that happens a lot in music. Like your name, if your name is front and center, and it's like everybody knows it's your band, that's what threw me off. Is that he just he didn't do that? He just called it Boston. Well, maybe maybe, <laughs> maybe he didn't want to, maybe he didn't want to. That maybe that's kind of the gimmick he wanted to go with. 
It's it's a weird give it to go. Yoga for Fatty's knocking on the door to tie this game up. It has been back and forth this entire half. Handing it off, stopped Fontaine. Stopped a yard behind scrimmage by Doo Doo Pamper. <laughs> Always easy for a laugh, that one. Doo Doo Pamper. <laughs> that just reminds me of the two live crew. <laughs> How does that remind you of two live crew? But Fontaine ends up in the end zone. Touchdown yoga for fatties. This has been a great game. We're just we're sh talking random 70s bands over it. <laughs> the two live crew is not a 70s band. If they okay. were a 70s band, they would have been a, they would have been like in jail for at least like 10 years. <laughs> why why are you why did two live why does that remind you of two live crew? This is what I want to know. Because Luke from Two Live Crew did a song uh, did a song called I Wanna Rock. Parentheses Doo Doo Brown. <laughs> oh, gotcha. It's about it's a it's about one thing. And the other thing is about exactly what you think it is. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Quite a grotesquely vulgar band. Come on, but hey, they, they fought the man in, in, in obscenity charges. Sorry, I was like, Paul Shaper and the world's most dangerous band. What exactly makes them dangerous? Is there a metric to determine this? Um, they could just be a danger to themselves. We don't know. Like, I don't know what their personal lives are like. Maybe they're binge drinkers. Maybe they snort immense amounts of cocaine. Maybe they're a little too old and they, get, they rock a little too hard. I mean, you know, there's a lot of options here. Paul Schaefer is leading them. That's not a strong leader, I don't think. Um, maybe he leads them more than just as a band leader like I don't know I wouldn't trust Paul Schaefer to lead me you know if he was captaining a ship but maybe he does for them that is a weird one it's big obvious, play but, but ends the half tied at 21 sorry I gotta get the uh, the live reads in for this one we'll continue that in the second half you can help me with the live read though uh, meanwhile as we head into the half of our first game it's 21 apiece yoga for fatties trying to stay undefeated Taking on Francois Crapery. And now it's time for our look into our local corner, local spotlight, as we uh, highlight one of the local establishments here in the town of South Tucson, Arizona. Tonight we're going to talk to you about, once it continues finishing up here, still, still rolling, still rolling, still rolling. Going slower than normal. Here we go. Hackensack Hacky Sacks. Did you know that New Jersey is home to the Hacky Sack capital of the world? In fact, Hackensack, New Jersey, was not always called Hackensack. It was called Footbag, New Jersey. <laughs> and so they really didn't need to change it. <laughs> and, um... Any but, name. but they but they decided to go with Hackensack because they like the name Hacky Sack better. And just I mean for no other reason you should purchase them. So you could get them. They opened up they opened they franchised and they opened up right here in South Tucson, Arizona, where you can get authentic hacky sacks from Hackensack. That's Hackensack Hacky Sacks. Um that's right over the border. They're, of course, their original, their original warehouse. If you ever travel in Jersey, their original warehouse is right on the border uh, next to Frisbee's from Frisbee. That's Frisbee, New Jersey. They, they changed it to Mawa. Actually, I don't know where, I don't know where Hackensack is next to. I should find that out so I can make the joke correct next time. What is Hackensack border? I'm going to find out. Um, Teaneck and Garfield. Garfield. Garfield, New Jersey, yeah. T-neck. So you can buy T-necks from T-neck. I don't know why your T needs a neck, but fuck it, it does. It does need a neck or part of the T in T-shirt. Yeah, there you go. 
They make, they make, they send all the... T-shirts are manufactured normally without necks, and they send them all to T-neck to take the necks in. There you go, there you go, and there's, there's a first down um, by Kurt Gaines, not to be confused with Chris Gaines. Your W next? W next, V next. <laughs> the W neck, oh my god, that did you see that Gravity Falls episode? Oh that's like it's a Gravity Falls has made that. that joke. Gravity Falls made that joke and it's fucking hilarious. So that's the first one you think of when you think of V next. It's gotta be something it's just a <laughs> Oh big horse collar tackle for Keenan Copeland. Gets the gets the uh, the first down, eight yards. You know what they make the V, the W neck for? Siamese twins. Just thought. Oh. Of it. <laughs> uh, well, Hackensack is, that is what the. Is they for Gravity Falls, or is it just somebody with an extra little unnecessary flap of, of cloth around their neck? Uh, no, someone tries to make the W neck cool and then realizes that the middle just keeps flopping down. <laughs> um, while Hackensack is the hacky sack capital of the world, one should be reminded that Cornhole, Pennsylvania, is not the cornhole capital of the world. No, you gotta go to Bags, Iowa for that one. That brings up Is that an actual place too? No, I have no idea. Um, the less said about intercourse Pennsylvania, the better. Cornhole, Pennsylvania reminds you to drive safely and please stop playing cornhole in our town. Especially in the streets, like, that's just incredibly dangerous. However, recently there's a place called Y, Arizona. As in Y, Arizona, why? <laughs> There's also a famous place in, in the California desert. Um, I guess more specifically the Mojave Desert. Called, um, I think it's 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 pretty famous. It's called ZZYZX. Wait, are you talking <laughs> about the Rush song? No, no, that that's um. That's YYZ. YYZ, which would be a great uh, name for a town as well. That's just a great name for a wrestler. YYZ. Yeah, I, I call myself YYZ. I'm, I'm writing that down. I might use that for something. Yeah, YYZ. Like if you that might be an old-timey baseball player. Yeah, like you, if, you, if you spell, if you just spell it YY, like the letter, and then yeah. Z phonetically. Z Z-E-D-D, -D -D, or yeah. You, you add the extra D. But yeah. like, it, like, it, like it's like AJ, but it's YY. <laughs> yes, exactly. I actually came up with a couple of really good names um, the other day. I was really happy with it. Um, one of them that you'd appreciate is Chud Tater. Automatic first down. <laughs> it's so stupid, and I love it. Chud Tater. I got to make up a lot of them, and I got a lot of time, because that game doesn't come out until next spring now. So I've got a lot of time. Meanwhile, oh, breaking free for a run is John Paul Fontaine 30 yards that is only 42 yards for Fontaine so far but uh, they've been important ones he's already got a touchdown and yoga for fatties looking to uh, Glendrell Splendid is out for the game with back spasms that's not good that's not good for an 11 year old to have back spasms <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, back spasms are never good. But when you're 11 years old, it's probably really bad if you're having back spasms to the point that you can't play football. I imagine this kid's just, like, crying, going, what's happening, what's happening, what are these? Jared Brooks, five-yard catch. That's going to be a trouble for Francois Crapery. They're out, of, they're out for their, uh, their, their star running back is out for the game now. I'm sorry, kid. I'm afraid you got multiple sclerosis. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, that's... They hate to break it to you. John Paul Fontaine with a touchdown. 11 yards up the middle. I feel like Touch I should have led with just plain scoliosis first. Yeah, gosh. We went right for MS. <laughs> <clears throat> and Yoga for Fatties take the lead. Trying to... Uh, yeah, Xanadu, Xanadu would absolutely be their at-bat music. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. It's worse than we feared. I know we originally diagnosed this as back spasms, but I'm afraid you'll never be able to walk again. Christ! <laughs> Your back spasms are going to be... It's not anything else. Your back spasms are really going to be that bad. 
for the rest of your life. Maybe they'll stop, but right, you know, quite frankly, we don't know, and we don't care to know. We're too afraid to You're find gonna out. You're going to go down in medical history. As being the longest case of bag spasms ever. You'll have bag spasms till the day you die. It's like chronic hiccups, but worse. It's like your back is hiccuping for the rest of your life. Second and eight, Francois Crapery trying to tie this game back up. Yoga for Fatties have an undefeated record to protect. They are currently sitting at 2-0, and and they are looking to go 3-0 and undefeated into conference play. This is their last non-conference game before we start conference play. Francois Crapery, of course, going into the Foreign Legion. Yoga for Fatties, part of the big small business conference, the BSB. And let's see how Copeland can handle this without his star running back. Throwing it, overthrown, way out of bounds. Fourth and inches. This is an interesting decision. Do they go for it? 58 seconds to go. No, they're going to punt. 58 seconds to go in the third quarter, that is. Uh, they're going to punt. Oh, can we talk about how insane it is that Kurt Angle is going to be wrestling <laughs> on a pay-per-view? <laughs> I'm not that? thrilled about it, but you know... I am not either. <laughs> no, I, I, I feel like everyone's kind of like, oh my god, this is all going to be so wacky now. This is going to be a wacky, wacky pay-per-view. Um, but like... I know, I don't... I was mildly interested in how the pay-per-view was going. There was a lot of cruiserweights and women on the matches, and I'm hoping those are still on. I I know it, Nia got pulled. That's all I know. Here's the thing. Contain a loss of, people, of four. A lot of, a lot of people are going to blame this on, like, on it being a one-match pay-per-view. But the reason it's a one match pay per view is because they put like all the push talent in one match. Well, they put, they, yeah, they did a shield, the shield reunion. I mean, that's kind of a, that's the kind of match you do that for, though. It is, but it they. The problem with one match pay per views, much like one fight cards in UFC or in boxing, they really are one fight cards anyway, but. If something bad happens on short notice, you're fucked. Yeah, this is an this is UFC's problem all the time. <clears throat> uh, however, I gotta say I'm interested to hear about that new guy that they seem to have uh, really been hyping up, uh, Manny Jitus. It uh, shouldn't. He's got like he's got like a computer hacker gimmick. He's viral Manny Jitus. It's more unfortunate with wrestling than like than than, than like. Like a systemic problem, yes. Because they don't have to cut weight, or like, or like theoretically, you have to pass a drug test, but not all the talent. Oh yeah, or yeah, or they, or they just they push they themselves to, to the they push themselves to the point of the weight cut and training that they injure themselves. Yeah, and, the, and you have to be, in, you have to be, you cannot have any injury. You can't fight through any injuries whatsoever. Or work yeah, through any and injuries. in WWE, in wrestling, they're wrestling all the damn time. So it's not yeah, like it's not like they're it's not like they're happens. building up for one thing and then they have to pull. They're, if, they're if kind this of, literally if this meningitis case literally happened last weekend, they would have been able to use a full three hour television show to, to rebook the paper. Yeah, and it kinda sucks and you kinda feel like you can't blame them for this because shit happens like this. But if like a UFC fight happens like ten days out and like a guy gets injured. Yeah, you gotta rebook it. Fun. You gotta call you gotta call some people who are hopefully ready. Yes, there's, they're still very much fucked. <laughs> they don't, and they we don't got a face a mask. Defense. So Francois Craper are going to get first and 10 on the 23. Uh, yeah, I've heard it's actually the mumps as well. But I can't I, um, I can't make as good of a joke out of that. I still think the issue with the pay-per-view, though, was you could look at the card and realize there's three women's matches on this and three cruiserweight matches on it. That's good hard. and also kind of scary. Yeah, it just means your mid card on Raw is does not existent. It has no it reason to be on a pay per view. Yeah, because the, the mid card is literally the cruiserweight guys and the women's matches. It's true, for it's, better or for worse. We're getting a PowerPoint presentation though, and I can't be more excited than that. That's probably getting moved to the main card now. <laughs> I hope so. It deserves it. It's a pretty good act. 
Um, Copeland airs it out. Oh, big tackle. Kurt Gaines gets it down to the one. Huge stop on the goal line. That's some great defense. Just comes in. Uh, Roll uh, Fizz is drinking his own lung oysters. I also feel kind of bad for Bray Wyatt. Because he's the only guy in the scenario whose meningitis made the wrestling card better. Yeah. <laughs> he's got, like... he's got to know this is a he's got to know this is terrible too though. <laughs> yes, it, I just feel bad for a guy who's who's gotten a serious illness and everybody's like, yes, we get a better match. Right. Yeah. And Francois Crapery, like literally drinking a caramel cheesecake. Francois Crapery are going to tie this one up. 3.48 to go in the game. We got a hot one brewing, and we may be coming down to the wire. It may be clock management at this point. Gaines has back spasms as well. My God. Do you think these kids might just be having, like, sugar sugar rush highs, that they're maybe not back spasms? But all I know is that Yoga for Fatties are going to take this one all the way down. Precision route runner with a 54-yard kick return. Down to the 28. Offenses have been on high octane this entire game. Second and 12. Mm -hmm. Yes, we should make Drew Gulak just basically yeah. live in a bubble so he does not get sick. Hey, Jay Harper 19 thank you for giving me the follow. Appreciate that. Just saw that now. I don't know when you did, but thank you. Hope you're still watching. I know the new new Legacy Boys are uh, are uh, stream are, are are hosting us, which I appreciate. I appreciate. And yoga for fatties, touchdown, Willie Peterson. Catching that one, D.D. Wheatley, another great pass. Nice wobbly spiral as is uh, customary for a 12-year-old to throw. And gets the touchdown, 3.09 to go, yoga for fatties. They are in the driver's seat. Cassandro Williams taking it up to the 43. We got quite a finish brewing here. Three minutes left in this game. Starting with a short four yard catch by Devin Cotton. It is the fabric of our lives. And our next game will feature 2-0 Ted's Baby Clothes Emporium taking on 1-1 one one, Casa de Gordoso Hourly Motel as we get more from the CSC and the BSB in that matchup. A second team from the, C, uh, the BSB, that is Casa de Gordoso. Uh, Ted's Baby Clothes Emporium, the first team tonight from the Child Services Conference. Bit of a surprise, they're starting the season at 2-0. Oh. They have not had a very good... Uh, very good start to the, uh, very, very good seasons the last two, uh... <laughs> last two seasons, so... That's a gain of four on the play. So maybe turning over a new leaf. Or a new, uh... Baby clothes. Piece of clothing, I don't know. Fourth and nine, Francois Crapery forced to punt. Yoga for fatties have a chance to take the air out of this football and oh my god oh my god that player just dove to the wrong side for that football and it's a good thing he didn't touch it because it was down by Francois Crapery that kid is dumb as Did that kid just passed out I think that kid might have just passed out from the heat that may not be all right that's gonna be a big catch made looks like that's route runner again is that route runner again Personal foul 
Roughing the passer. Roughing the passer. Didi Wheatley got clobbered on that by MJ Matthews. 37 is where we're going to move the football to. 15-yard penalty. And I uh, got to wonder, we've been seeing a lot of roughing the pastor. Should that be our new dr should that be another one we add drinking to? Maybe any personal foul is a uh, is a drinking uh, penalty. Oh, we got a face mask on that one. Max Watkins. Still first down. Giving it the first and goal for Yoga for Fatties. Well, this is just a nightmare situation for Francois Crapery. They are just collapsing at this point. Just realized Will uh, had to leave the studio. Didn't notice that. John Paul Fontaine. No gain on that one. Second and goal. Well, the weird thing about the Chilean underground is they mean the miners who are usually trapped. Um, that's that's topical. That didn't happen for years. Um, and third and goal for Yoga for Fatties. They are right on the goal line, knocking on the door. And off again. Touchdown, Fontaine. And Yoga for Fatties. Game's going to freak out for a second, so let me fix that. There we go. Have taken a two-possession lead. A two-score lead. 42-28. to 28. Francois Crapery are, are now in, in a bit of a panic. They have 100 seconds left to go in this game. They've got to score twice. And they're going to start off by taking it almost to the house. Antoine Church taking it to church. All the way down to the opposing 40. They're going to spot him on the 39. And that's a big way to help your team. Short field to get into the end zone. Minute 33 to go. Francois Crapery have used up all their timeouts. They're going to throw it. Incomplete pass. Minute 30. Keith Hall with the tackle. They need to get a touchdown uh, relatively quickly, then recover an onside kick. We have seen it happen before. It happened in week two. We've seen it right here on stream. Big catch made and out of bounds. First and 10, Connor Lilly. And that's how you do it. You make the catch. You get right out of bounds. You stop the clock. 86 seconds. They are down to the 27. Copeland dropping back. That catch is made by Lilly again on the right side. 13 yards, same play, just reverse it. Out of bounds, stopping the clock. Takes another five seconds and another first down. Francois Crapery are just running like a fine-tuned machine right now. A fine-tuned crepe machine. Almost picked off in the end zone by Robinson. Oh, he would have had a second interception. That would have easily brought an end to this football game. They're out of timeouts. So the onside kick that will have to result after a touchdown is going to be crucial as well. Gets the catch, Lilly out of bounds, third and seven. Can't go for those short passes. Got to go right for the end zone at this point. Going for the end zone, incomplete pass, fourth and seven. This is the game. If they don't complete this and get a first down or a touchdown, the game is over. Back to pass, a lot of time to throw. Copeland gets sacked, it is all over. Minute and one second to go. It's a turnover on downs. Yoga for fatties are going to go ahead and take this. Football, kneel it out and end this game. A strong effort by the home side. They're going to drop to one and two. Yoga for fatties. 
are going to be the first team so far to hit three and O. Oh. And they are gonna go into big small business action. They've got a home opener in conference play against fat and lazy motorized scooters in week four. Francois Crapery, they're gonna look to rebound uh, with a home game against Kebab Barkers. We're gonna see Kebab Barkers. Uh, who did Kebab Barkers play? Oh, they haven't played yet. They've got a game against Cramblers, House of Gags and Actual Items. Kebab Barkers could be entering uh, non-conference play or conference play at three and O. Oh. But that's going to be it for us for this first game. Stay tuned. Our second game is coming up shortly. But the final score, Francois Crapery, 28. Yoga for Fatties remain undefeated. They put up 42. And until next time, I'm Brian Hughes. This is South Tucson Youth Football. This is KYST. We'll see you next time.